So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you call a movie that took over a decade to be officially released, but yet uh, had a strong performance at the box office when it was under probably 15 different titles? Well, it's got to be Pigs. Now, Pigs is a 1973 American psychological horror film co-written, co-produced, and directed by Mark Lawrence and currently distributed by Troma. (coughs) The film stars Tony Lawrence. Now, Pigs premiered on May 23rd, 73 in Detroit, under the title The Pigs. The film then received a theatrical release in 84 as Daddy's Deadly Darling and has been re-released under a large number of other titles, including Daddy's Girl, The 13th Pig, Blood Pen, Horror Farm, Roadside Torture Chamber, The Killer, The Killers, Lynn Hart, The Strange Love Exorcist, Lynn Hart, The Strange Love Exorcist, The Strange Exorcism of Lynn Hart, and The Secret of Lynn Hart. Now, in this crazy movie, a man named Zambrini, not Zamboni, lives in a rural California area and operates a small, isolated diner catering to local oil workers. He also feeds fresh corpses, apparently acquired by grave robbing, to a pen of 12 pigs he keeps behind the diner. Two spinster neighbors, Miss Macy and Annette, suspect Zambrini of feeding human bodies to the pigs, but cannot convince Sheriff Dan Cole, who investigated their claims, but it cannot get Zambrini to admit to anything. Miss Macy tells him that whatever, whenever Zambrini feeds a new body to the pigs, there is new pig in the pen the next day. Into this mix comes a young woman named Lynn Webster, a stranger who comes in a diner looking for work and a place to stay. Zambrini immediately gives her a room and a job as a waitress, asking no questions about who she is or where she comes from. After a nightmare where Zambrini attacks her with a straight razor, Lynn attempts to investigate the hog pen behind the diner and is intercepted by Zambrini, who obviously warns her never to go back there. Now, Lynn attracts the attention of local oil worker Ben, who pursues her for a date. After politely rebuffing his advances, Lynn finally relents after Ben reveals that he found an abandoned nurse's uniform in a nearby field, suggesting that Lynn is on the run from something that she does not want to be revealed. After Ben takes her out in the truck and attempts to rape her, Lynn invites him back to her room at the diner and murders him with a straight razor. Zambrini finds her and cleans up the evidence of the crime, feeding Ben's dismembered body to the pigs. Lynn seems to have only fleeting members of her crime, and she continues making one-sided phone calls to her father, promising to return to him. Now, a man named Jess Winter arrives in town searching for Lynn. Once he makes contact with her at the diner, he reveals to Zambrini that Lynn has escaped from a mental institution. She is dangerously disturbed psychopath due to being raped by her own father, whom she stabbed to death. Winter tries to get her to go back with him, and she agrees, but when Zambrini tells her she wants her to stay, Lynn stabs Winter to death. Now, Winter's disappearance triggers an investigation that reveals Lynn's past to Dan Cole. When he discovers she's an escaped mental patient, he calls the diner to warn Zambrini before rushing out there to apprehend Lynn. Instead, Zambrini wants her and attempts to hide her from the police, but she stabs him to death because before he can get her to leave. She makes one last phone call to her father, and this time we hear that she's been talking to an automatic recording for a disconnected phone number. Suddenly, the pigs invade the diner, presumably attacking Lynn. Cole arrives on the scene too late and discovers the aftermath as the pigs are being loaded to their truck the next day. He realizes there are now 13 full-size pigs. Number of the beasts, not 12. (laughs) Produced again uh, by Mark Lawrence and Donald Reynolds, Written by Mark uh, Lawrence and Fania Foss. Directed by Lawrence. Starring uh, Tony Lawrence, Mark Lawrence, Jesse Vint, Paul Lickey, and Catherine Ross. Cinematography by Irv Goodenough and Glenn Rowland. Editing, edited by Goodenough. Music by Charles Bernstein. Uh, distributed by Troma. 80 Minutes English. And uh, pretty well a no-name cast. Now, as it stands right now, Pigs premiered on May 29th, uh, 73 in Detroit under t- title The Pigs, and according to Lawrence, the distributor offered free bacon to the audience at the event, most of which was costly returned after it was over. So free bacon didn't solve the, the, the plot holes galore in this one. Now, in late 73, Lawrence sold a movie to producer William Rowland, who created a new ad came for, a campaign for the film, retitling it The Secret of Lynn Hart and positioning it as a slasher film. Shortly thereafter, the success of The Exorcist inspired Roland to add a possession element to the movie. Lawrence was brought in to film a new opening to the film, depicting an exorcism being performed on Lynn who escapes. 
The rest of the film plays out as normal, with Mano further mention the possession of the supernatural. This new version was retitled Lynn Hart, The Strange Love Exorcist, often shortened to shortened simply Love Exorcist in certain territories. The cut of this film also appeared on the alternate title Blood Pen in 76. In 77, Donald Reynolds removed the exorcism scene and filmed an additional prologue and epilogue for the film that initially played under the title Daddy's Girl. After shortening the prologue from Reynolds' cut, the film was released theatrically on November 6, 84, by Aquarius releasing as Daddy's Deadly Darling. Now, Bill Gibran of DVD Talk wrote that the film plays like a schizophrenic version of The Farmer's Almanac and lamented the lack of killer swine in the film. Brian Orndorff of Blu-ray.com wrote that the film isn't the animals gone wild adventure it might appear to be, but commended the film for exploring the destruction of sexual abuse, the pain of isolation, isolation, uh, and crumbling of untreated minds. Now, uh, Daddy's Deadly Darling on IMDb is its official uh, uh, title. And if you go into there, uh, I don't think, according to the poster I'm seeing here, uh, it's not uh, it's is it's it's not basically what's depicted in the poster has been uh, changed uh, changed around a little bit, but there is a, a trailer of the movie if you can put up with uh, three minutes of complete you know hacky stuff. Eh? Now uh, the Lord's family uh, in Canada is well known for uh, what he called being. Uh, uh, hard-working actors. So I don't, I don't know if the same. this is the same type of Lawrence family that's reflected in the uh, Canadian uh, acting uh, uh, scene. But the, the poster itself, once the pigs tasted blood, no one could control their hunger. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no problem. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the story about pigs, if you, uh, or the pigs, if you want to research a little bit more, there's a little bit uh, of uh, tidbits about Daddy's Deadly Darling uh, on IMDb. Now, uh, now uh, the Charles Bernstein, who did the score for the film, he did an exchange for an oil painting that Mark Lawrence owned. Now, Mark Lawrence made hunks of bread in the shape of arms and legs for the scenes in the film which the pigs eat human flesh. And the film, what a surprise, was shot in eight days. Now, Mark Lawrence put a mortgage on his house in order to raise the money he needed to complete the film. And Charles Bernstein had to do the vocals for film's theme song himself because he did not have the money uh, to uh, to afford it. Obviously, obviously. Now, uh, star Tony Lawrence is the daughter of the film's director, Mark Lawrence. The original working title for this film was Menu for Murder, shot at a ranch in Lake Peru, California. The title of the film's director is got is the 13 pig and of course only cbs fox video would release it on australia and new zealand because that was international distribution a pig of a movie and you know if you can find it <laughs> best drawn video or an old vhs shop uh but i would suspect that if somebody would have saved the bacon you know maybe that's a collector's item i don't know didn't save the bacon it was cooked or not so so we were just giving out bacon you know you know, promos, eh? That's the way it works. Thanks for listening. Bye.